typically what you want to do is you want to close that um, horizontal distance between your opponent at this point. You don't have the same maneuverability as a Spitfire, so don't try to outmaneuver. So right about, yeah, here is when I would start opening fire most likely. Wolf back here. And just a little bit about me. I have been flying flight sims since the original IL-2 series. However, I am mostly a single player flyer. Although uh, recently I've been getting more and more into multiplayer and I would consider myself an average flyer. I do mainly fly allied aircraft as well. And my least flown German aircraft or German fighter is probably the Focke-Wolf. Uh, g'day. So I'm MB and Enigma has requested I get my thoughts on the clip. Um, I'm just the dude who plays the game. I'm just nothing special, so let's just uh, jump right into it. My name is my hang, my game handle is Tempest or Tempest Seven. Uh, I've got a Twitch channel, Tempest Seven MR. Uh, I stream IL Two and DCS. Sometimes some other games like Escape from Tarkov and whatnot. Just got into streaming, you know, about a year, year and a half ago. So forgive me for not having that. Uh, uh, orders voice, <laughs> um, but if you bear with me, I've got a lot of experience with uh, virtual flight sims. Been you know flying uh, flight sims since I was like, four years old, uh, doing competitive flight sims since I was in my early teens. Uh, Jane's USAF, that whole series, World War II Online in particular, is where I spent a lot of my time. Here's a Focke Wolf diving in on the Spitfire Mark 14. Overall, this is a perfect setup, starting with an altitude advantage, which I always like, and the enemy is seemingly unaware. My favorite types of kills are the kills where the enemy doesn't even know I'm there. And uh, that's what I strive to do. And the Spitfire's turning a little bit, wiggling around. And uh, he's trying to maintain... Um a position in that Spitfire's low six o'clock, where a quick six checks for the Spitfire, uh, he can't really determine where he's at, can't really see him. So right about, yeah, here is when I would start opening fire most likely. So you can see here he's pulling in for a lead shot and the Spitfire notices him and does a negative G bunt and starts breaking. And this is more down to setup than anything in the game itself rather than technique. So it's a really good idea to get a really good tracker profile set up for yourself. Um, you don't want to be looking more at your dash than at your target. You want to be able to see your target at all times. Um, the other thing is your profile is set up too sensitively, then you're just going to lose the aircraft because your head's going to be flying all over the place. You want to have a rock solid center. But the Focke Wolf misses, breaks off and climbs up which is the right thing to do. The right move to do. Um, he's setting himself up perfectly above the uh, Spitfire and uh, waiting for his time to attack. Begins to dive in again. And uh, right at this point, Enigma's trying to, he's not, he doesn't have his gun sight directly on the Spitfire. And that's like a key thing um, that when I like work with uh, some other people learning BFM is that you don't need to have your gun sight on your enemy the whole time. Uh, you want to be offset, and you want to be offset in the direction where you think he's going to be. So Enigma right now is currently predicting that the Spitfire is going to break to the right. Um, that was the last time he broke in that direction. Maybe he's guessing that way. You can kind of see his wings are tilted slightly to the right. Um, I would have done the same in this position. In fact, that would have been a little bit further displaced to the right um, <clears throat> to either encourage him to go left, which would actually take the fight further towards my friendly lines, um, or um, if the guy's oblivious and he just likes right turns, he pulls into my gun sight. Their attack, exactly what I would do really, and he's actually facing the sun. His back is to the sun, which makes himself more difficult to see. Now from here, the spit decides to do a split S towards the ground. Now. In most other aircraft, that's a benefit to you, but for the Spit, um, it's not a bad advantage at all. That's actually quite useful for him, because if you chase him down and try to follow through that maneuver, you're giving up a lot of energy. So my recommendation wouldn't be to follow it in, in the chance you can get a uh, deflection shot. I'd just go back up. Just go back up, be patient, don't force an error. The good thing is just not to get frustrated and um, impatient. It ends up working out because he's much faster than the Spitfire, and that's probably because the guy pulled a ton of Gs 
uh, when he was dodging that last high angle deflection shot and then we went straight up. But typically what you want to do is you want to close that um, horizontal distance between your opponent um, and you, uh, especially if they're slower and you've got more energy. The more you can close that distance, the more AOA they have to pull. Uh, sometimes the more tempting the target is and they'll try to pull for a shot and won't be able to make it. Um, if you extend kind of like this while climbing, you're losing speed. You're give, like Your opponent doesn't have to pull as many degrees. Um, like The closer you are, the harder you have to pull. So the farther you are away, the less you have to maneuver your nose for that shot. So uh, with the Spitfire, it's not a terrible move, but planes like the P-38 with big centerline guns or even the Tempest with 500 meter convergence, those things can be scary when you do that. Um, you typically want to try to just turn into your opponent to keep them above you. But uh, he's got a ton of smash, so it's looking like it's going to work out well. Um, Spitfire also may or may not know where he is. I think he does, and I think he's got the nose leveled out um, to build up some airspeed and wait for the next attack. You can see the shadow over there. All right, he's rolling back in on a nine o'clock attack, coming in from the sun too, which is good. Oh, track IR screwed up for a second. He's checking his six. So he's coming in from the sun, which is great. Having your back to the sun will certainly help. Okay, coming on in. And this looks like the beginning of the clip, positioning himself on his low six o'clock once again. Of course, the spit is a bit more aware, so you'd probably have to open up, well, earlier than you did the first time for sure. So it's a little bit late in this frame, but one thing if you noticed like throughout earlier in the frames, he's going 650 kph, however, he's failing to put in left rudder. Um, Enigma is using a twist stick, so that's very difficult to do, but when you're in a dive, you want to make sure you fly coordinated and get as much speed into the aircraft as you can, especially if you're running away, but even if you're attacking more speed, better. Um, uh, he was flying, the ball was off to the left, um, if you guys saw that. Um, and again, like even with, with rudder pedals, it's really really easy to do, but I forget it all the time. You guys will watch my stream and I'll be flying uncoordinated like an idiot. Um, it's something you want to keep up in your visual scan as you're doing this, uh, just squeeze out. It does matter in, in more modern games like this and earlier games it didn't matter at all, uh, or hardly mattered. Um, and so things like this, you just want to keep in mind. Okay. Spitfire's turning though. So. And another missed shot, yeah. But he climbs back up once again. Not as high. I probably would have kept a steady climb a little bit more. But it doesn't seem to make much of a difference here. If he pulls into him, like you saw at the end there, that the Spitfire got a nose position on the 190. Now, the 190 was far enough away where it didn't matter. Um, or might not have mattered, depending on the guy's convergence and his gunnery skill. Um, but it's a risky move. If he pulls into him, that Spitfire is going to have to really crank down, and you see how slow he is, that's going to give Enigma a perfect opportunity to drop down and attack him. Um, in this case, he's extending horizontally away from the Spitfire. Um, Spitfire is slow. He can't really attack from here. He's too far away horizontally without, like, rolling back around, pulling a head on or whatnot. So he's got to lazily turn this thing back around and re-engage. Again, he's safe here. He's far enough away. So it's not a critical mistake, but more of like a, a criticism of that. Like, you know, again, when, when your opponent's turning in, you, you turn into him. Just turn into your opponent, stay above him, try to get him to bleed off that energy and then drop down on top of him. The Focke-Wolf's really good at those hammerhead maneuvers too, uh, especially at low speeds with... Um, forward stick movements. Um, it's able to. It's got a lot of nose authority at low speeds, pushing the stick forward, um, and and using that in combination with the rudder, you can really drop on the plane. That being said, Enigma might be thinking about where that other spit was, as you saw. Like he was constantly checking his six. He's looking back into the sun. He knew that other plane was out there. Doesn't know where it is. It doesn't look like it's in this fight at all. But he's behind enemy lines, and that's something that's running through his head the whole time here. Uh, the Spitfire is not able to keep up. Pinging him back over for another attack. Building up a lot of airspeed, passing 500 kilometers per hour now. 
which is good. Try to get guns on target and and so this is the moment where you kind of have a decision to make. That Spitfire is turned far to the left and you are going probably well over 600 kilometers per hour at this point. I would have kept going straight and zoomed back up and reset this whole situation once again. Um, I have, I'm sure after three minutes of you know sparring with the Spitfire, probably getting a little frustrated, a little annoyed, but you need to kind of put that all aside and avoid you know, squandering all of your advantages. So with that massive speed advantage, I would have zoomed right back up. I would have kept going straight. The Focke Wolf tries to get guns on, but overshoots the spit. And this is when the spit, um, his gunnery is solid and he smacks him. So that, that decision to turn left and try to engage the spit uh, when the spit is low and slow was obviously what killed him. I don't know exactly what was going through the pilot's head here, but I have a feeling he was probably getting a little frustrated after three minutes of sparring with the Spitfire. So I find the most important things with dogfights is really just mentality and discipline. Of course, gunnery matters and, you know, tactics matter, but discipline and that fighter pilot mentality is really what will save you from getting into trouble. So this is where the 190 loses the fight uh, completely. So one, we're diving on a target, that's fine, but we've lost sight of him, all right? Lost sight of him completely through this maneuver because we're too zoomed in and we've got too much of the dash up in our face, okay? This is not a good position. You've lost the target. He's actually gone off to the left, right? And now, what the pilot decides to do is to slow down. You're basically playing into his game at this point. You don't have the same maneuverability as a Spitfire. So don't try to outmaneuver a Spitfire. Um, that's the only real big mistake of this entire engagement is trying to fight the Spitfire on a Spitfire's terms in a 190. All right, so he's coming back down on the top. The Spitfire has dropped his nose to build up speed to prepare for another defense. It looks like he's going to commit to a right turn. So we're going to pause right here. So if you could see Enigma again, you don't want to put the gun sight on the aircraft. It, like you don't need to. You're not trying to pull a shot here. You got to pull lead anyway. You can see that the Spitfire has already committed to a right hand turn. You might as well predict the movement. Um, if you're going in for a high angle, high angle deflection shot, offset to the right. What I would do here, and Enigma is already offset to the right, which is a good move, I would have gone even further and kept him in the left window pane over here. Again, forcing him to either crank back left, which is going to help me make a, an easier shot, because um, be, instead of him turning into me, he's going to be turning away, and that I'm going to have to pull fewer Gs. It's going to be a lower angle deflection. I can use a high yo-yo vertical component to come down on him and attack and it's going to be way more advantageous for me for making that type of shot. So that way he's got he's like between a rock and a hard place. Either he's got to cut through and hopefully dodge my guns through a jink, but I've already set up for the shot so I've got a lot of time to watch predict what he's doing and set him up or he's got to reverse his turn which I'm going to see and then I'm going to be able to do a high yo-yo maneuver come back down and in behind him for a lower angle deflection shot that's more advantageous for me easier to make. So really kind of forcing that decision on the opponent that being said enigma like again this is i'm not in the plane and it's a little bit different to judge here you know when you're in the aircraft you can kind of feel what it's doing i don't feel virtually but you guys know who've flown a lot know what i mean by that um it's hard to judge what he's feeling here um how many g's he's pulling of his plane if his his pilot's a little tired that kind of stuff so uh he's he set himself up like he's off to the right here, so this is good. I just would have done a little bit further. So what we're going to see here is the Spitfire reverses his turn. And he's cutting back left and pause. So here's where I think Enigma makes his critical mistake. He, he gets greedy and he's trying to end the fight. And you noticed again, like I mentioned earlier, there's another aircraft in the area. We can't hear what his radio comms are. Maybe it's a friendly, maybe it's an enemy, probably an enemy. I couldn't really get a good view of what it was um, when it zipped by. 
But um, in that case, it's got to be running through his mind. He's like, I got to end this fight. I got to get out of here before I get bounced by his friend or, or just another passerby. I'm behind enemy lines. So he's trying to end the fight. The problem is the Spitfire has made one high G right hand turn. If you notice that Enigma's uh, speedometer, he's going like 600 kph. Spitfire is going much slower, and he's suckering him, and he's pulling him, in, pulling him in into a horizontal scissors to force that overshoot. So Enigma commits, thinking that he can get the shot. And what you're going to see here in a minute is that he's going to start blacking out, and he's going to be left with option, uh, left with few options. Um, what I would recommend, and I've already seen this footage that we'll continue to play, is that he continues his turn after the Spitfire reverses his turn um, and extends and escapes. Maintain that speed. The Spitfire has burned a ton of energy trying to like in induce this reversal. Just bug out. Or right now, go vertical. Again, like give up. you're not going to pull that shot. Go vertical. Do a high yo-yo. Come back over on the top of him. If he reverses his turn, continue to pull up. Cut that horizontal distance and come back down on top of him. Use that energy. Um, if he continues this turn, he's going to bleed off too much speed, and he's not going to be able to separate himself enough vertically in a climb to avoid getting killed. Unpause. So you can see the Spitfire is reversing his turn, and now Enigma is realizing he's in trouble and he's trying to climb and he's trying to turn, and it's too late. Pause. And that's the end of the video. Um, and he gets snipes. And the problem there is is that he didn't have enough vertical separation um, to avoid inevitably what happened, and he couldn't turn back into him. Uh, the Spitfire just forced that overshoot beautifully at that point, and what he could have tried to do at that point is really crank down and tighten up that spiral, but you guys could see the pilot was blacking out, he was fatigued, um, he was still going like 500 some on KPH, he probably just didn't have the nose authority to do it. Um, he should have ditched out the turn and extended and escaped while the Spitfire was maneuvering that aggressively, especially after he made his second reversal. Just keep going. Just Spitfire's turning, you're trying to cut in, you're in a lag pursuit, he cuts back, comes over your nose, you can't get a gun solution, just keep going. He's got to reverse back and come back behind you, and you continue your turn, and you run west and get home, or he's going to complete his turn, and then you just level out, and you extend as much as you can, and you slowly make your way back to friendly lines, climb up, reset the fight, turn back into him, um, but re-engage re on your own terms. So I can now give my point of view. When I was diving in, this spit was turning right, and right here, I never saw him in my left window, so I'm still looking for him, and I saw him too late. And because I saw him too late, I reach over, and I burn a ton of E, and because my reaction was so late and I turned so much, I bled so much energy that I could not get away. Tempest mentioned earlier that he saw another plane, plane briefly, and interestingly enough that it was actually a friendly that was coming in. And I justified going hyper aggressive here in my head because I was trying to tie down this Spitfire so my wingman could come in and smack him. I just didn't expect to overshoot so quickly, so I died moments before my wingman uh, comes in and, and shoots him down. Um, I want to thank the guests for coming in and giving their insights. All of their YouTube or Twitch streams links can be found in the description. If you found their commentary interesting, I encourage you to give them a follow or a subscribe. I found it incredibly interesting to see what they picked up on and what each of them wanted to focus on. I got a new track IR and joystick setup, so I'm still getting a feel for everything. So Envy makes some great points about focusing on setting up good visual fundamentals with setting up a track IR profile. Um, that can also be found in the description. I think Wolfpack's point about the frustration and trying to say discipline really rings true, uh, especially for me because my frustration here of missing my shots because I'm using a new joystick is what was really triggering for me and I think ultimately that's kind of what got me killed. Um, lastly, hearing from Tempest of how to turn an adventation situation uh, more into your favor I found incredibly helpful. I hope you guys really like this format. I've actually never seen this done before in the sim community uh, and I would love to keep this going. I'm Moonlight as a professor. So teaching at a university, I uh, try to also invite guest lecturers to come and give their point of view. Um, to kind of get a, so the students can get a full picture. Um, so this is kind of my way of bringing that to the multi, you know, bringing that to a multiplayer sim gameplay setting. If anyone is interested in commenting, or if anyone has some interesting clips that they would like commented on, I encourage you to post it on my Discord. If there's any interesting fights, um, you know, I would love to get to do this again with a few other people. 
Uh, lastly, do not forget to like and subscribe. It's the best way to help this channel. So thank you so much and have a great one. Thank you. Thank you.